fall, it is a time of great change as our world prepares itself for winter. With the ominous promise of a dark winter ahead, many celebrate by dressing as parrots or dyeing their horses green. Others choose something more sinister. Zombies have become a cultural fascination. From popular TV shows to the rewriting of Pride and Prejudice to charity zombie marches, it is clear that we are enthralled by creatures that are dead, but not. But fall is a time for a different sort of living dead. The murky depths of the West Coast River have their own plague of zombie-esque creatures to contend with. They are the Swimming Dead. Rivers surrounding the North Pacific face millions of swimming dead each fall. Salmon that only days before were strong, happy fish have become these grotesque monsters. They are not actually zombies, but on a single-minded quest to reach their place of birth to spawn. Although they were born in freshwater, their bodies are no longer designed to handle it, and their flesh will start to break down as soon as they enter the rivers. Most don't eat. They are totally and single-mindedly determined to reach their destination. The fish eventually perish, leaving their carcasses to rot. The smell of the decomposing bodies can engulf entire towns. It is the ultimate sacrifice for their young. After they lay their eggs, they will die. In the spring, when the young emerge, the nutrients from their parents' rotting bodies will have been recycled into creatures like this mayfly nymph, which will, in turn, provide food for their young. During the salmon run, rivers become veritable feeding frenzies. The gulls and mergansers have their pick today. Soon thousands of eagles will arrive to feast. Bears take the opportunity to fatten up before their long winter sleep. Since Europeans arrival, they have tried their hardest to exterminate the Pacific salmon. They've tried everything from dams to stop the passage of the salmon, to killing off the young by filling in wetlands and estuaries. But the creatures persist. But not everyone seems to think that the swimming dead should be exterminated. Here on the Harrison, researchers catch and take Chinook salmon to help monitor their populations in the hopes that they can learn how to help them. These Chinook were raised in a hatchery and implanted with tiny coated wire tags before they were released. Removing their heads not only ensures that they will not rise from the dead, but also allows that tag to be retrieved, giving scientists insights to the migration of these creatures. Whether you think of it as a zombie plague or a miracle of nature, the salmon will come, they will stink, and they will die. But they will also bring life, and a new generation of salmon. Without the plague, we'd lose millions of pounds of food. The ecosystem would miss a gift of biomass from the ocean. They may stink, and they may be ugly, but they are a natural phenomena that need protecting. The rivers are getting harder for the exhausted zombies to navigate, and the children of those zombies continue to lose their rearing habitat in estuaries and wetlands. Salmon face rising water temperatures, habitat destruction, overfishing, and pollution. In a world obsessed with zombies, these magnificent creatures should be celebrated, not destroyed.